Welcome back, Sweet Chris here. It's Saturday, I just got back from Sweet World, and in this version of NetSuite News, I'm gonna be talking solely about Sweet World, and instead of just recapping the whole event, I'm gonna be focusing on the things that were previewed in terms of products and features, and really diving into that and my subjective opinion about what's gonna be cool, what's maybe not as useful. So we're gonna be doing a deep dive on that. This video is probably gonna end up being pretty long, but I am gonna break it up in terms of the timeline. So you can just jump forward to certain features that you find particularly interesting. Now, before I actually dive into the video itself, I do wanna say thank you to everyone that actually came out and saw me at Sweet World. I had people coming up to me in lines and in the hallway and the expo hall, and I really appreciate that. Oftentimes I only hear back from you guys through YouTube comments and through emails, so it's always nice to actually have a human interaction. So I really appreciate that. And I also wanna let you guys know that I did release, I had a lot of requests just before Sweet World and also during Sweet World to have some sort of a package that can be used not just for one person, but for a whole company. So I released the corporate training package, which really allows up to 10 users the ability to access any super training course as well as future courses that are coming coming out. And it also comes with email support and things like that. So if you have enough users at your company that you feel like a product like that could be helpful for you, uh, feel free to check it out. I will have a link up above and down below. And of course, you can always email me if you have any particular questions about that. So now diving into the video itself, I do want to comment. I, I mentioned in my last NetSuite news video, I commented on the fact that the keynote speech itself was relatively could be passed, right? You could skip it and you wouldn't lose much on that. They actually structured it and kind of organized the keynotes a little bit differently this year where the first most important keynote done by Evan Goldberg was solely done by Evan. And they took the other NetSuite executives and they put them later in the week. And without really going too much into the details of that and why I like that better, uh, I did feel like the first keynote was much more helpful. He was kind of just going through and previewing various features and talking about various products in a way that was a little bit more A to B and was at least a little bit more informative. So I did find that pretty interesting. Although, like I said in the previous video, it was a lot of hype just about products in general. There was definitely a huge amount of talk about AI, way more than should have been done. In fact, one executive who's doing a different presentation commented at the beginning of his speech that he didn't have AI anywhere in his speech, so he was probably gonna be fired after the speech. So that gives you a concept of just how much it was really hyped up about how NetSuite is infusing with AI, et cetera. So I'm gonna talk about that quite a bit in this video. Video. I also just want to make a little bit of a disclaimer. The keynote speech will be released as a YouTube video. Generally on the Oracle NetSuite YouTube channel, they come out with a few of those keynotes posted as full videos. That video hasn't actually come out yet. It'll probably come out in a week or two. So I only know what really was said in that one and a half, two hours, and it's really just what I recall from memory. So I apologize if I don't remember exactly everything, especially on release dates, sometimes vague in terms of when things were coming out. And if I get anything wrong in terms of details, I apologize. Certainly that video will come out. I'll try to post the link for that video when it does come out in the description for this. So you can, anything interesting to you in terms of products, you can actually go through the full keynote or at least the section where he's talking about that. So you can really know for yourself exactly what he's saying about that. In this video, I'm more talking about kind of my opinion about what was presented and previewed and whether I think it's going to be helpful or not. So the first thing that was brought up was Redwood, which is not a product, but really a UI overhaul, just kind of changing the user interface and making it a little more streamlined, a bit more as the guy who designed it kind of explained it. They're trying to get and go away from the approach of dropdowns within dropdowns within dropdowns to make things a little bit cleaner and really take the look of NetSuite, which we're all aware of, take it out of the 90s and bring it more to what we're used to in this age of mobile apps and the kind of clean, nice design that you see these 
these days. So overall, uh, honestly, I think it's quite impressive. Uh, it's definitely a cleaner look. It's easier to navigate. Now, it's not groundbreaking, and that's intentional, right? You don't want to change things too much to the point where people don't know where the hell to navigate to. So they have changed things a little bit in terms of where to look for certain features or how to navigate around. But in general, you're not going to be totally lost. They changed like typesetting and things like that. Certain features are in slightly different places, but the whole purpose is to make things more intuitive and just streamline that interaction with the system itself. Now, Redwood is not something brand new. They have been kind of talking about it for a while. And the idea is that it's gonna be coming out with the next release, which is happening around October of this year, so in about a month. And it's something where you're not gonna be forced to go onto Redwood. You're gonna have the option to either stay in the existing UI or switch over to Redwood. So you're gonna have that option. You can test it out, see if it's something that you like and roll with that. Now, from my standpoint, obviously it's a little bit annoying because I've made all these courses and videos that are using the old UI, but you will see from this time forward or really from when the Redwood is actually released, I will start making videos and courses using the new UI. And no doubt I'll come out with a video where I just kind of highlight it, talk about some of the feature changes, etc. So Redwood, that was the first thing that was discussed in the keynote. And overall, I think it's uh, definitely a step in the right direction. The next thing we're gonna talk about is uh, just a whole category of features that all relate to or in some way involve AI. So there was a number of different things that were talked about. Some of them have already been talked about in the past. Some of them were brand new. So I'm just gonna kind of go through that whole list. And first up is a feature uh, really just to talk about overall kind of the direction that it seems like they're trying to go, this is my personal opinion based on what they said, is going in the direction of having AI, your interaction with NetSuite, AI kind of facilitate that interaction where you can simply tell the system, hey, I want to do this, this, and this. And instead of having to innately know exactly how these tools work and be able to fill in all the exact right fields, you can simply tell NetSuite what you want to do and it actually works all that in the background. That seems to be almost like the vision that they have, which I think is great and definitely the right direction to go in. The question is, how and when will it be executed? So how broadly will these features be actually rolled out? And when are we actually gonna see them in action and be able to use them in a way that's actually helpful for our businesses? So in terms of the first feature, which I think really highlights this kind of point in the direction that they're going in, is a feature that works specifically with planning and budgeting. If you're not familiar with that module, I wouldn't be surprised. I only know a few clients who have ever used it. And I'll talk a little bit more about planning and budgeting um, much later in this video. But as for now, just understand the name is self-explanatory. It's a product for planning and budgeting. And the tool is what's called Ask Oracle. And it's a, like a little search bar. And you can ask it, you know, hey, I want to know what's happening with these clients at this time, et cetera. And it will pull up that information. It'll try to generate reports for you, et cetera. And that's great. So that's certainly something that's helpful. The problem with that, obviously, is it's limited just to this planning and budgeting feature right now. And then the other aspect is the uncertainty in terms of when it's going to release. I could have missed something. There might have been certain AI features that were announced to be released in this upcoming uh, October release. But in general, I did not notice those actual dates put. So these are things that may come out in a year, maybe longer. So the second feature um, from an AI standpoint is a suite analytics I think it was called the Suite Analyze Builder, and it basically, it's a very similar thing, but it works specifically with Suite Analytics in NetSuite. So when you're on your that center in your dashboard and you see analytics and you go to that, you can make pivot charts and all these different, especially data visualization type graphs, you can use this thing. And it's basically like a little chat bot that goes on the side and you can tell it, just like what I said with Ask Oracle, you can go in and you can say, hey, I wanna see a report that shows me all the vendors that I've had to spend at least $1,500 within this date range, et cetera, et cetera. And it just within five seconds, it pulls up and makes, let's say a bar chart. And you can tell it, no, I want it as a pie chart and it morphs it over into a pie chart. And then you can say, okay, well, in addition to that, I wanna know in this particular product class, what happens with this, this, and this. 
and it does all that background work, all the filters, etc. Overall, I think this is great. Again, uncertain on the release date, but when it comes out, this is something that's very helpful, especially with something like Suite Analytics, which in and of itself is a great tool, but very few clients and especially consultants know actually how to use it and are familiar with it. So if you can come out with a tool where you can just talk in normal you know, human language and have this thing be able to do all the background work to provide you with exactly what you want, that's awesome. And that's going to be very helpful for clients and is definitely a step in the right direction. The next up is Text Enhance. Now, I've talked about Text Enhance quite a bit in two previous videos. So I'm going to try to keep it short on this, but uh, the basic concept is it's like ChatGPT on specific fields in NetSuite. So let's say you're on an item, you need to put the item description. Instead of typing it all out, you can click on a button and it automatically generates using AI and what it knows in the other fields, it'll try to fill in what it thinks this item description should be. So that's something that exists right now. In the October release, they're going to upgrade it from just like three fields that it has right now to 200 fields. The problem is the tool is entirely useless, in my opinion, and so moving it to 200 fields doesn't make it any more helpful. At some point, they are supposed to come out with a feature, I think they called it prompts, where you can particularly set in, let's say it's the item description field, you can write in almost like a rule set where you say, when someone's filling in an item description, the way that you should treat this is I want you to have a professional tone and I want you to format it this way. And you can kind of set these parameters so the AI knows how it should treat this particular field. But as much as it sounds, that's quite tedious. And it's something where you got to go through every field and give it all these different guidances for every single one. And the real problem that I have with this thing is that unlike something like ChatGPT, where real time you can ask for something and then you can say, oh, that is what I want or it's not. And then you can give it additional guidance and it will craft what you want. They only have a few settings that you can do. You can either generate new text, you can shorten the thing, you can lengthen it, or you can clean it up, whatever that means. So you can't give it exact direction. You have to just take what it gives you. And if it's not correct, you're going to have to go in, manually change the prompt, right? And only a couple people have access to do that, probably an administrator and a handful of others. So if you're just a general user, you're stuck with it. You either have to manually type exactly what you want to say, or you go with what it has. You don't have the ability to say, no, you went a little too salesy. I want you to be more professional or some kind of specific direction. You have no capability like that. So in my opinion, until they actually provide that level of flexibility to actually get what you want, these tools are going to remain just wholly unhelpful. Then we have two features that were both related to SweetScript. So before I get into them, first off, if you're not a SweetScript developer, I highly recommend you just skip this section. It's going to get a little bit jargon. And secondly, do keep in mind that I am not personally a SweetScript developer. I do have quite a bit of familiarity with how it works and the various script types, etc. But I am not personally someone that goes through and does developing and programming. So with that in mind, those two features and Again, I'm doing this from memory. So there were certain things that were a little bit hazy or unclear in terms of exactly how they're going to roll out. The first feature was sort of a prompting feature, almost like it can fill in the rest of certain scripts that you're working on, or it can actually kind of point out, hey, I don't think this is correct, or I think you're going to run into problems with this. So almost like an autocorrect and auto fill in feature. And then the second one was one where you can give it instruction and it will generate the script that you want. So you can say, I want a MapReduce script that has these parameters and these constraints, and it's going to fill in and automate this and this, and it will generate the script for you. And specifically, that was going to work with the IDE VS Code. So it wouldn't necessarily work with something like WebStorm. So in general, that is a cool idea. The problem with it is that these things already exist. There's already things like the Copilot plugin that can work with VS Code or WebStorm, and it already does that. So, and again, I might have missed something. There might have been some information or some additional aspect of it that made it unique and cool. Now, if NetSuite uses the proprietary information they already have, for example, there's 
I don't know, thousands, millions of JS docs that already exist in the cloud. So if NetSuite was able to analyze those and use that information about best practices for scripting and kind of have that as a layer on top of your normal LLM so that you can not just get normal information, but also use that information about the existing JS docs to better craft these scripts, then that could be an incredibly useful tool. I, again, I didn't particularly see or observe that that was mentioned or that was going to be part of the rollout. So maybe it is. And if so, then that's great for developers. If not, then just use the tools that already exist. There's nothing shocking or new about that. And then lastly, there was a product called Error Finder. This one, I was actually particularly distracted. So I believe it was a tool that's specifically going to work for Oracle related products, meaning you can still use it with NetSuite. I'll get a little bit more into what I mean by that. But what it does basically is it looks at two different options. It can either look at transactions or it can look at journal entries. And what it does is it'll analyze them and it will you know, historical data, it will decide what are the outliers, what are the transactions that fall outside the bell curve, especially in terms of value or the accounts that they're hitting, and it will present them to you as red flags and say, are you sure these transactions are correct? And you can look at them and say, oh, no, there's an extra O put on this transaction. That one's not correct, and you can correct it. Oh, or you can say, ignore, these are fine. So the way this works is um, it looks through all that data, your, all your historical data, it brings you these things. The problem with that is the way that it's currently at least presented or previewed. And this thing, again, it has no release date, so we're not sure when this is gonna come out, but it doesn't have the ability to set parameters or to give it particular guidance. So almost like the opposite problem that Text Enhance has, this should have the ability to say, where you can actually program in, you can say, hey, listen, when you're looking through transactions, I don't want you to look at the ones that hit this account. Or if there's ones that are in this date range, you know, December is always a weird month. Don't give me a bunch of red flags from that month because those are actually going to be fine. Also, when it comes to dates, that could be a problem because let's say you increase the prices of all your products, suddenly every transaction, or at least the majority of them, are going to start coming up as red flags because they're too much. When in reality, if you could set and really guide the, the AI from a standpoint of saying, hey, Actually, what you think looking at historical data is correct transactions, if those occur in today, then they're actually going to be red flags. The number should be higher because there's been a change in the way that we price things. So you can't give it that instruction. And as a result, it's a little bit limited in terms of what it can do. Now, unlike Text Enhance, where I think that really cripples the product, in this case, I think it's not a big deal because this is going to be providing you with a bunch of red flags. And it's easy to go through and say, no, these are fine. Ignore, ignore, ignore. And then you can come across one that is a red flag and you can correct it. So it, it doesn't hamper the product that badly um, for the fact that it's going to give you probably more information than you'll need and you're not able to guide it a little bit. So that's the host of AI-related products. There's a few other features and products I want to comment on. One was guided learning. Uh, it was actually unclear to me if this was something that had already come out because I know I've heard about this for quite some time now. So uh, this might already be released. If so, I apologize. It's not one that I've personally interacted with, but I believe it's one that's going to be coming out soon. And the idea is that you're on a page and let's say you're on like an item page and you're having a, a trouble setting it up or doing something with it you should be able to click on a button and it gives you a little pop-up menu right there on the page that will give you instruction on exactly what you should do and how to navigate through it. So that, I mean, it's a great idea. Really everything hinges on how the thing is done and how it is taught. The idea in and of itself could either be great or terrible depending on the quality of the information it provides. So it's really not one I can comment on until I'm actually able to interact with it and see how just how good is it giving you instruction? How intuitive is it in terms of understanding and knowing what the problem is that you're running into? If someone is literally just copying and pasting things from the documentation into a pop-up, it's going to be a useless tool. So that's one where uh, certainly if it's already out, no doubt I'll make a review on it at some point soon. Or if it's going to come out in the future, I'll definitely do a review at that point and test it out and do a full-fledged kind of review of how useful the guided learning is.
The next product they announced for the October release was Sweet Procurement, which is basically a punch out tool. So if you're creating a purchase order and you need to punch out to a website, you can do your shopping. It kicks you back into NetSuite to finalize the purchase order, which is great. Um, there's two kickers on this. One, it's only with Staples and Amazon. So if those are your only vendors, then this is the product for you. Otherwise, it's gonna be quite limited. And then secondly, uh, there's already so many existing competitors to it. In fact, funny enough, the biggest sponsor for Sweet World was Saligo. So they were actually there at the keynote and Evan Goldberg did a back and forth with, I think it was the CEO of Saligo. And to have Saligo, who's sponsoring this whole event and does a punch out tool and does various integrations and then follow that up with, we have our own punch out integration, you should go with us, was a little bit amusing. So overall, it, I mean, again, there's so many existing punch outs. You should just check those out if you're interested in something like that. And then lastly, in terms of products and features, I wanted to talk about kind of like a grouping of products, and I'm not gonna go into detail on any one of them. Most of these products have already existed and, and they're either having just new features or more they were just kind of presented because NetSuite is trying to take advantage of the fact that there's all these Oracle products that already exist and they can be useful and used by NetSuite customers and they can upsell them to these Oracle products. Many of them are quite expensive. So it's something that they're really pushing as check out these things that we already have, you should take advantage of them. So when I say Oracle products specifically, I'm referring to the analytics warehouse, there's planning and budgeting, there's open air, which is pro for projects. Specifically, it's now gonna be renamed Sweet Projects Pro. There's also reconciliations. There's EPM, which stands for Enterprise Performance Management. And really that's just planning, reconciliation, and analytics warehouse. So it's just kind of like a, a bundle of those and some dashboards for that. So you've got all these different products. And these products are, I, I've interacted with a few of them a little bit. I need to do a deeper dive on these and really kind of stress test them. But overall, the impression got from them is that they're great tools, but anything that they can do, or not anything they can do, but they do what NetSuite natively does. They just are more robust. They generally have, uh, at least right now, they have a cleaner UI, they're a little more intuitive, and they have more flexibility. So. That's great. The problem is you really have to be kicking in a lot of money and doing a whole implementation, also getting used to a new tool. Because keep in mind, this is not NetSuite. They're often pushed like they are NetSuite, but it's different, right? You have NetSuite, you log into NetSuite. If you want to use planning and budgeting, you have to log into Oracle. It's a totally different login. Same thing with all these other ones. It's a different dashboard. It's a different interface. You have to get used to that. And yes, they seem like they're great tools. It's just different. It's more money. It's a different thing. The data basically goes into NetSuite as the true source of data. And then that updates and syncs into this database. So it's not going to go from EPM over to NetSuite and update the NetSuite records. It's just going to go from NetSuite down to these records. So I'm not saying that's necessarily a downside, you just need to keep in mind, you know, it is a different system. You're not just gonna be in NetSuite and there's some obvious drawbacks of having that. And of course, the cost that goes along with them. None of these things are particularly cheap. So that's it in terms of products and features. I can't promise I hit every single one. Again, I'm doing this from memory, but hopefully, I know I covered all the high notes and, and the major ones. The last thing I wanna talk about before I wrap up this particular video is there were certain things that were said in the keynote that I felt like they were really hyping things up that should not be hyped up. So I just wanted a bullet point. I don't want to slam on them too hard, but uh, bank reconciliations, they talked about it as if it was God's gift to man. And certainly uh, I wouldn't say it's a bad product. The alternatives have their own uh, problems in terms of third-party apps, but bank feeds can be quite finicky. It's not necessarily the easiest thing. Uh, doing daily reconciliations and having it fully automated is not as easy as they made it sound in when Evan was going back and forth with one client. Uh, certainly, they made it seem way better than it actually is for most clients. Secondly, there's LCS. Obviously, I'm incredibly biased because they're a direct competitor, but just be aware of LCS. Check out the videos before you decide that it's something you want to spend, uh, in some cases, thousands of dollars on a year. And then third and most importantly, quite a bit of um, preference and importance put on ACS, which is advanced customer support. 
And I've talked to a lot of clients over the years. I have never once heard someone positively speak about their experiences with ACS. So be aware of that. Uh, I, I, when I was just at Sweet World, I had a few clients when I was just talking to people at dinner tables, talking about thinking about going with ACS. And I just recommend you at least check out any one of the solution providers that offer support and optimization as a service, because it is such an important service to have. And you just should be aware that you're not stuck with ACS. You do have other options. And minimally, you should juggle them back and forth to see if you want to end up going with something like ACS. So that's it in terms of this video. Hopefully, I did a at least a decent enough job kind of filling you in on what's on the horizon or soon to be coming out with NetSuite. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.